All righty. Thank you all for being here. Uh, last night, the Kentucky Department of Education released the accountability scores and ratings for schools um, across the Commonwealth. Uh, these scores, of course, are based on student performance on the state and national tests, and they measure student success. They're based from last spring. Uh, in your package, you all received include a brief explanation of how these scores were calculated to help you um, and us to explain uh, the accountability system in our community. Uh, we have also included um, a one-page graphic uh, we will be sharing with families and the chart um, with scores and ratings for all of our schools. Uh, at this time, the Fayette County Public Schools, we are pleased that we continue to outperform the state in both the elementary and the middle school level. And although we, you cannot compare last year's colors with this year's colors, um, we do have more schools earning yellow, green, and blue, which is the medium high and very high achievement levels. Um, we're also pleased to share that Fayette County Public School is making. Um, it's, a, it's truly the progress that we're making is a testament of the hard work that our teachers are doing um, for our students and the hard work that our students are doing. And, you know, data is important and it helps us create um, the circumstances to where we can understand where our students are and intervene just in time in order to make progress. But I would like to stress more than anything that our students are so much more than a test and they're complicated beings that really um, cannot be measured um, on a test that is given on a certain time of the year, uh, a few days of the year for a few hours of the year. Um, but I will say that I'm a staunch advocate of accountability and I know Fayette County um, holds um, the schools responsible and really um, expect us to provide a world-class education for our students. And as an educator, I'm also acutely aware of the constraints of um, such high stakes testing, um, but we are fully aware that it is something that our students and our families look at to measure the success of our schools. And we continue to advocate for every single child to ensure that they are achieving at the highest level possible and that we're doing all that we can as a school system to ensure that they are um, have the opportunity to reach their greatest potential. Um, each year, uh, schools in Kentucky also are evaluated against the federal classification. Um, it not only looks at the school performance, but it also looks at um, demographics such as race, family income, English language proficiency for um, families that are new to the country, as well as students with special needs. Um, schools can receive one of three federal designations. Those designations are CSI, which stands for Comprehensive School Improvement, and that's given to schools that are in the lowest 5% of um, their peers statewide, and who also students have been performing at that low threshold for potentially three years is another way that they can receive it. Last year, Harrison and Williams Wells Brown elementaries um, both received CSI labels, and I'm thrilled to tell you today that both of those schools have um, exited that status, and we're proud um, that their intentionality and focus has really made a difference in those campuses, and we expect to see continued growth for both of those. Unfortunately, we do have one school this year that entered into CSI. It's Bryan Station Middle School. It was identified because for three years in a row, their um, English language learners, students, um, have not performed at the level of um, at the high level of other schools, and therefore on the fourth year they entered into CSI status. Um, I would like to reiterate that Bryan Station, just like all of our schools, are is a great place to learn and lots of great things are happening there. And again, a test cannot measure uh, all the things that are happening in our schools day in and day out. Um, schools receive also a federal designation of targeted student, a targeted support and improvement. And that's if any group of students is actually based on race or socioeconomic status, uh, are receiving special education services or English learning services, if it performs lower than the benchmarks of those in the that are identified as um, CSI schools. As a district, uh, we are and continue to be committed to providing a world-class education for every single student and um, some of these uh, data points really help us to identify where the disparities are and to help us intervene. Um, I'm excited to share 
um, that FCPS has significantly reduced the um, number of TSI schools and the number of students um, groups that fall below this requirement. Um, in 2022, um, we had 34 C um, TSI schools with designations and this year we have 21. Um, nine of those schools designation is for a single student group. Um, 10 schools are no longer identified um, due to their um, black African-American scores, meaning that black African-American scores increase considerably at those schools and therefore they no longer have that designation. We have two schools that are no longer considered it for English learners. We have three schools that are no longer considered TSI um, or have that designation due to the economically disadvantaged students. And we have seven schools that are no longer um, have TSI um, designations for students who receive special education. As I shared at the beginning of the press conference, uh, this press briefing, uh, the accountability data released last night is a one-year snapshot, and the changes to the ratings are calculated to prevent um, identifying trends. Um, however, a deeper dive into the actual data um, on the state assessment shows significant improvement in both reading and math for our elementary students. Um, we're also proud to share the percentage of students meeting or exceeding state benchmarks increase not only across the board, but also for children from historically marginalized groups, including our black students, our Hispanic students, and our students receiving English learning um, support and students with um, that receive special education services. These gains for our younger students are really building the foundation to build upon here in Fayette County. And while the progress at the secondary schools is less dramatic, um, there are still calls for celebration. The middle and high school levels have improved. In fact, um, there's a greater number of students achieving at the proficient um, and higher levels while fewer students are receiving at the lower and the novice levels. Uh, these collective um, results really affirm the work that FCPS is doing and support of our teachers and the work that our teachers are doing each day in the classroom and the fact that our students are um, continuing to progress and recover. Um, we're confident that these um, further We've implemented systems that allow teachers to really go deep into their learning where they can identify the specific needs of our students and go and I make sure that they are receiving the supports that they need based on individualized instruction uh, or whether those students are also needing to be accelerated so that they can reach their fullest potential um, and master um, certain skills as well. Our district supports implemented last year are yielding very positive results and um, including the strategic support plans and the instructional coaching that we provide at each of our campuses, particularly our CSI and TSI schools that have those designations. And we also have implemented a multi-tiered support system, which not only looks at our students and their academic needs, but it is a whole child approach that allows students to look at their social emotional learning needs, their home needs, as well as any other needs they may have to ensure that they um, are, we are taking care of any barrier that may impede learning. Uh, the data released from the Kentucky Department of Education this weekend or this week really underscores the impact of the changes we've instituted while showing that there's still much work to do, no doubt. Um, we celebrate the progress, but we do remain steadfast that um, there's still things we need to do to ensure that every student has the support and resources they need in order to succeed. And our team will continue to work tirelessly um, to nurture the unique and limitless potential of each of our children. Um, regardless of their zip code, their um, race or ethnicity, their language, or their family income. At this time, I will take specific questions from Please the audience. Please identify yourself by name and media organization. Um, we will present your question. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Lauren Gorla with the Herald Leader. Um, Math really struggled statewide, including including here in Fayette County. And in yesterday's KDE media availability, um, commissioner pointed to teacher quality, being able to retain really high quality teachers, especially in math. Um, do you have any thoughts on that here in Fayette County or maybe um, some programs the district is looking at specifically for math improvement? Well, we are fortunate here in Fayette County. We are able to recruit um, most 
um, of our teaching positions are filled, um, whereas I know many of my peers are struggling in that area. Um, but we are continually looking to increase the amount of quality candidates that we can recruit. And we're also implementing systems to where math curriculum is really um, taught and assessed on an ongoing basis so that our students, our teachers will know where our students are at any point in the year and able to intervene. Dr. Ligon, Michael. I can hear you. Michael Burke with LAX 18. Um, can the improvements, where there is improvement, be traced to the fact that we're now a couple of school cycles, school years removed from non traditional instruction, COVID? that sort of thing. Yes, we can definitely see that we are making progress and it's no surprise that our elementary schools who um, are progressing faster than our secondary schools uh, simply because our secondary schools were, uh, many of our elementary students were not as impacted because they weren't necessarily in school as of yet. But we are seeing that there's progress and we're seeing that it is impacting the elementary um, most, but we are still very hopeful, and um, I think our scores at the secondary level are promising to ensure that we continue to make an impact there as well. Anybody else questions? Michael? Oh, I'll let someone else ask. Someone else asked, I don't think no one else did. Uh, Austin Schick with uh, Spectrum News, One Kentucky. Uh, we talked a lot about the schools going off of CSI, and now there's one in CSI. Are you able to elaborate on kind of the work that goes into getting them off of that uh, designation? Well, the particular school, Bryan Station, that's in CSI now, is based off of three years of English learners not performing at the level that they should. And we have really revamped our process for our students who are learning English. One of the things I think is worth noting is that our students who receive special ed services, as well as our students who are learning English, all take the exact same test as their peers. And so we're really ensuring that we're just doubling down on the services that we're providing in order to help those students um, not only learn the content, but also learn the language simultaneously. Lauren, Michael. Hi. Um, one of the schools that showed pretty high performance was Athens Childsburg. Uh, do you know of any specific programs or strategies there that are working that maybe other schools in the district could learn from? Well, uh, one of the things that you will notice from any data, it's not just Fayette County Public Schools data or Kentucky data, um, nationally, you will see schools that perform at a higher level and schools that perform at a lower level are mostly based off of family income, the majority family income at those schools. It's unfortunate that um, some News organizations decide to rank our schools simply because if you were to look at those, you would simply see that the schools that are performing the highest are schools with families of more means, and our schools that are performing the lowest are schools with, of um, students that are more in poverty. And so um, I, I, I resent a comparison of our schools because there's amazing things happening at each of our campuses. Some of the unique challenges that happen at some schools aren't necessarily at other schools. And um, every single um, campus is working diligently in order to ensure that all students are getting what they need in order to be successful. Doctor, were any of the results <clears throat> eye-opening for you in either way? No, I will tell you the results that come out um, October 31st and November 1st uh, really are old news to us. Um, we take data points throughout the school year. Our students have been in school, as you know, since August. And so we're not waiting on this data to, um, to intervene or to make any type of um, acceleration for our students and their learning. We know from data throughout last year, throughout the last couple of years, where our students are going, what they need, and we make plans well in advance of this. Unfortunately, um, high stakes accountability, um, in my opinion, is, and releasing this in October is simply a punitive measure. I do realize the importance of giving a metric to our community and also being able to compare to other districts and the state as a whole, but this is not new data to us. This is not something that surprised us, and this is something that we've already intervened and are making, have made changes well before this data was released. Great question. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, 
Uh, you've touched on a couple of these points already, but for parents who may be looking at these numbers um, or guardians and thinking, wow, my school is on the lower end, what is going on? Like, what would you, what would you say to them to calm them down or to assure them that um, there are good things going on in their school? Well, every um, family I would recommend really go into their schools. They will look at their individual child's um, assessment scores, what they all receive, and look at what their child is actually doing and what they're needing. Um, we have in each of our, in our most highest performing school and in our lowest performing schools, we have students that are struggling and we have students that are thriving. And so to look at the overall score of a campus does not tell you exactly what's going on. As well as, um, I'd like to reiterate in Fayette County, our students have a a variety of um, opportunities for a comprehensive educational experience. We have students that are brilliant artists and brilliant um, in, in many other ways and intelligences that can never show that talent or that skill set on a multiple test given on a given day out of the school year. We also have students that can do the content of a, um, a test and simply can't do well on the actual test itself. And so it's important to not look at the school itself, but to look at your individual um, student, um, I think for parents to really understand exactly how they're doing. But I will say that there are talented teachers on every single campus working very hard every single day to meet the needs of our children. And that goes well beyond what they can do on um, a multiple test in a particular content area. Just one oh. clarification. That is part of the just state's accountability system. Certain grades are chosen um, based off of certain content that's taught at each grade levels. All right. Thank you all for your time.